Venues and staff have been severely impacted during this pandemic. So as we look back to 2020, what are the lessons we learned around the pandemic and how it's been handled at venues? And what can we look forward to in 2021? Joining me today on the Fanny Dunnigan Show as I talk to Mark Herrera and Sarah Mathis on how I create exceptional guest experiences. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you're tuning in from. Welcome to the Fanny Dunnigan Show, where every week I highlight creative people, exceptional leaders, industry leaders, and content creators that lead with their heart. Welcome to the show. I have an amazing lineup for you this week, and uh, we're going to talk all around guest experiences. But in the meantime, let's see who is in the comments. Welcome, Ruben from Monterey, Mexico. Very cool, all the way from Mexico. And uh, we have Yolanda, as always, from Frisco. Welcome, Yolanda. And uh, Braden from Mansfield, Texas. Y'all have to connect with uh, Braden. He is a leadership coach as well as a magician. It's a very unique combination. So definitely connect with him. Mark, welcome from Farmersville. Uh, Nicole from Orlando, welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And I want to encourage all of you to please introduce yourself with each other in the comments. Tell people what you do, tell people your expertise, use the comments as a networking event and connect with people that you're meeting on the show. You never know who you'll meet and you never know who might turn into an amazing connection. So I challenge all of you to connect with at least three people in the comments and meet someone new and build your network that way. So welcome everybody. I do want to bring on real quick and small 
She is my community manager for the show. You're going to see her all over. Welcome, Anne. Hello there. And, uh, yes, yes. Make sure you connect with her. You'll see her managing the comments. Let because um, a lot of times I miss your questions, so she'll bring them to my attention and um, definitely connect and engage in the comments there. Thank you, Anne. I'll see you behind the scene. Okay, as I do every week, I have a content tip of the week for all of you out there creating content and sharing your messages and sharing your voice. My content tip of the week is all around digging deeper. A lot of times I see people post on LinkedIn or any kind of social media platform, and they just write one or two sentences. And I want to challenge you to dig a little deeper than that. You have 1,300 characters to write a full-on post, especially on LinkedIn. Use those characters to illustrate your points. There's three secrets that I encourage you to use. Obviously, add your information. But in addition, add something personal, two or three sentences to illustrate a story or an analogy or an example. Share why this post is important and why you're sharing this piece of information. And then thirdly, share who would benefit from that post and who could learn something from that post and who you want to attract with that post. So whenever you create a post, on one hand, have all your information, but on the other hand, dig a little deeper, talk about the why, talk about the who, and then add just a one or two sentences to give a personal perspective. That's a great way to connect deeper with your audiences and develop deeper relationships with your community. So dig deeper is my content tip of the week. Okay. And now a new feature on season two of the Fanny Dunnigan show is my hashtag shine your light quote of the week. And this week I want to share with you a great quote that I got from Tony Robbins. The guru is information that is not attached to emotion is not retained. I'm going to say that again. Information that is not attached to emotion is not retained. Okay. So it's so important that whenever you share information, share why something motivated you, inspired you, touched you, and evoked an emotion in you. And those are the kind of things, those are the kind of posts that will resonate so much more with audiences, especially if you share a pain point or a challenge you face, and then the lesson that you learn from it. Okay, so whenever you can, make sure that you share information and attach an emotion to it. Okay, that's my uh, quote of the week and content tip of the week. And uh, now let's get to the meat of the show. Um, so this week, I'm going to talk all around extraordinary guest experiences. And my guest this week is Mark Herrera, who is the Director of Education and Life Safety at International Association of Venue Managers. Welcome, Mark. And then my other guest is Sarah Mathis. She is the Director of Fan Experience for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Welcome, Mark. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, Thank Fanny. Thanks you. for having us. Thanks, Fanny. Oh, for sure. Um, I am so excited to be chatting with you guys. Um, concerts, sporting events, venues, like they've been impacted so immensely. And at the same time, those places provide so many thrilling experiences for us, right? And I still remember the first time I went to like my first concert or my first like, I think it was a baseball game and the excitement that I feel. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to having that return and, uh, and hearing from you guys how things are going in your various venues. So thank you for joining me today. Pleasure, so, having us. Yeah, so Mark, I wanted you to kind of like 
please give a little introduction to yourself and share with us, like, what is the International Association of Venue Managers? Absolutely. And first of all, thank you, Fanny, you know, for having us on your show, myself, and obviously, Sarah. Uh, I always say that I like being the dumbest person in the room, right? <laughs> I took that from Paul Valaya. If you're the dumbest person, you're too listen, modest. <laughs> Lord of God. So being with you folks, I'm good. I'm golden. But it's a pleasure being on your show as always, and and before as well, Fanny. You do such a great job with with such powerful and strong messages. Thank you know, you. Um, I am the director of education and life safety for the International Association of Venue Managers. It is an association representing public assembly venues from around the globe. IVM's active members include uh, members and, and senior executives from all different venue types. So auditoriums, arenas, convention centers, exhibit halls, stadiums, performing arts centers, university complexes, um, and the list goes on, right? Amphitheaters. So we represent uh, right at around a little over 7,000 members operating over about 1,200 venues, uh, give or take. And so one of my role is to work closely, you know, with an awesome team at IVM. I have to give credit, the team that I work with at the International Association of Venue Managers, Fanny, at the end of the day, they make me look good, right? Way better than I am. But it's a very lean staff um, with such a tremendous amount of responsibilities as servant leaders for the membership. Um, I also work as chair, uh, I chair the, um, Department of Homeland Security, Public Assemblies, Facility Subsector Council, uh, and this is the Coordinating Council, and this is to assure that we meet the needs and expectations of the entire industry. All of our members, as I mentioned, Fanny, uh, partnering organizations and other associations, and obviously Guest X, you know, is a conference that we deliver to our industry and just another area of responsibility uh, for our association. Absolutely. And I want to read something real quick from your bio because it's, I mean, you've had quite the career, Mark. Like you're also a seasoned law enforcement officer and trainer, spent 20 years with the Hobbs New Mexico Police Department in various roles, patrol officer, detective for the gang and narcotics unit, supervisor of the crime prevention division, um, Gosh, entry, le entry team leader, tactical sergeant for the SWAT team. You come That's with- That's a pretty big deal. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you come with such great security and safety advice and um, and just expertise. So definitely a great just, contribution. Fanny, let me just say that I'm not an expert in anything I do, right? Somebody says, what makes you an expert? I'm not. But if you ask me what makes me good at what I do, it's- I've aligned myself with great people like the folks on this call, right? Mm -hmm. That's what makes you good at the end, at the end of the day. And just the, just the passion to deliver and what we're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us, Mark. And uh, I want to introduce here, Sarah, real quick, director of fan experience for Jacksonville Jaguars. I just want to read real quick your bio, Sarah, because you are the director of fan experience for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You originally joined the organization 20, oh, 2009 as game day employee, and your role has expanded to oversee the entire fan experience program for the team. And you lead your team with the mantra of experiences matter. I love that. Uh, in an effort to create memorable experiences for guests and team members at TIAA Bankfield and Daly's Place in a safe and clean and enjoyable environment. And you've had 12 seasons, oh my gosh, with the NFL and you gain experience in project management with the Jaguars logo in um, 2013. And you just rolled out tons of initiative so thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's It's been a, a wild 12 years. Let's just put it that way. Um, but this one has oh. definitely uh, been uh, the most significant in, in my entire career. I think I've learned more um, in the past year than I, I ever thought was was even possible. Um, so it's it's been a great experience. I, I, I have an incredible team. Um, we all work together really well. And um, I'm also, I have the pleasure of serving as the chair of the Guest X Committee with IAVM. 
Absolutely. So tell us a bit about what, what's been going on with football and stadiums, Jacksonville Jaguars. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, like a lot of other venues, when the pandemic hit, everyone had to, you know, work remotely and we had to really think on our feet on, on what we're going to do. We had our stadium concerts canceled. We um, had no idea what was going to happen with the NFL football season. Uh, we had um, all of our concerts in Daly's Place, which is our amphitheater on the south end of our stadium. All of those shows got canceled. So we really had to to work together um, to be prepared for reopening. Um, so we were very fortunate that we were actually able to host fans this season um, for not only um, we have um, some all elite wrestling shows at Daly's Place that we We've been able to host fans at. Um, we've had a few uh, few graduation events, um, but then most importantly, in our, our largest kind of event that we've had is the 25% capacity fans at TIA Bank Field, um, and that was for all eight of our Jaguars home games. So we were really fortunate to to be able to to host fans um, and be able to to do it safely throughout the entire season. Yeah. We've missed it as fan, yes. as a fan, as a human being. We've missed those experiences. So, yeah. so even at limited capacity, it's it's definitely uh, uh, worthwhile. And tell me a bit about this uh, Guess X virtual conference. I want to hear it from you. Tell people what that is and um, and why should people should be attending as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the guest X conference yeah. is really um, tailored for anyone for who is an entry level um, person in the, the customer service um, venue versus a anyone who's, you know, a, a vice president and executive. So it really can benefit all ranges of, of individuals. This year, obviously, is our first time going virtual. So we spent a lot of time as a committee trying to figure out what was going to be most effective and most impactful for folks. So um, Fanny, I believe, is going to bring up our program schedule. So we are very excited to have uh, herself. Fanny is going to um, kick us off our opening day very excited. of our conference. Yes. yes. Um, and with that, um, you know, we're going to have some great speakers. Um, we've tailored it a little bit differently that you're going to receive presentations in advance of the conference. And then on the day of the conference, then we're going to do a little bit more live Q&A interactive um, pieces of it. We're going to have some trade shows. We're going to have town halls. And then, of course, is any conference really complete without happy hours? So we'll host those over um, all three nights. So Fanny is going to be day one. Um, day two, we have Dr. Justin Anderson. He's from um, Premier Sports Psychology, um, and we're really, really excited. He's going to talk about building a resilient mind. I think, obviously, during the pandemic, everyone's been challenged personally, professionally, um, mentally, emotionally, physically. So that's building that resilient mind um, and the mental health aspect of it is just so important for everyone within within our industry. Um, you know, no matter what sector you're in, if you are in, you know, performing arts and stadiums and universities, um, it, it's really can be beneficial for any anyone who, who is um, in any of those areas. And then um, on day three, we actually have um, Jonathan um, from uh, Southwest Airlines, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about how the airline service philosophy can really enhance the guest experience. So, you know, we are, we've are we all been, it, for, for those of us who, who've been fortunate to host fans, and, and as well as those of us who have not been able to have guests in our venues, you know, it's it's really creating those memorable experiences and making sure when people are coming back to our venues that they're able to come back and, and really enjoy it and, and make these memorable experiences. I just realized there's so much to you. Yes, <laughs> this is live. My kids are coming home. <laughs> My kids are coming home from school and I heard all kinds of noises. <laughs> but no, I mean, there's there's just so much to consider and putting on events, much less putting on events during a pandemic. So um, definitely a lot of things to consider. For those of you that are in the comments and watching this show, definitely go to IAVM.org and go to Guess X and Guess X Home. Um, Anne is going to help us share that in the links and in the comments there. So definitely take a look. And as Sarah mentioned, great speakers um, and uh, from Southwest Airlines, as well as a mental health expert. And yours truly, I'll be speaking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how that relates to guest experience and marketing. 
Yeah. So, and, and just to add one more thing, it really is a skills based training. We want everyone who's who's able to attend to be able to walk away with, um, you know, some action items. Right. And things that they're going to be able to put into place. And what's great about this conference and IAVM has done an absolutely incredible job um, is not only do we have um, multiple registration discounts. If you have been furloughed, um, that we do have complimentary registrations available for IAVM um, who are full time members. So there's a lot of, you know, really great resources out there. So this is not just for those who are, who are currently active in the industry. This could be for someone who, who, who might be um, sitting on the bench waiting to get back in as well. Absolutely. So on the website there, there's the register link and the register tab. So definitely check that out and get more information there. Thank you. And so Mark, you know, we've, we've, I think we're in the 11th month of the pandemic. And um, there's definitely been a lot of, I'm sure, learning lessons and things that have happened in 2020. You know, can you share some of those lessons and then solutions that you guys have put in place, both from a security and safety and even just a guest, ex, uh, guest experience perspective? What have we learned and what are some of the new solutions that are in place now? That's So that's a really good question, um, Fanny. So really the, the first thing that some of the unexpected lessons learned is, first of all, we've identified a health crisis in a pandemic that we weren't prepared for, right? Typically, our industry is prepared for just about any crisis, you know, for the most part. This one caught everybody by surprise. So the first thing was, you know, we had to really, um, IVM being the beacon uh, for the entire industry and our membership, you know, we had a civic duty to provide something for the industry. But the first thing that we had to do is identify, you know, what is uh, identified reliable vetted information to assist in the in the information gathering pertaining to the current health crisis. Because, you know, every single day, you know, there was something different because this thing continuously evolved. So the key is we needed reliable information. And how do we how do we gather that information? That was so important. We utilized our industry professionals and working groups to do just that, representing all organizations, inclusive, you know, of, you know, meeting planners, organizers, service contractors, et cetera, et cetera, and trying to identify the top line safety, you know, considerations for all venues so that we can allow healthy people to enjoy the facility and event, you know, so that was so key. So, you know, the importance of, you know, how do you balance uh, Fanny, you know, the health precautions that we have to take now yeah. with the current crisis while trying to sustain financially. That is the key right there. <laughs> it's the ultimate balance, isn't it? Sure. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, sometimes it's a very painful decision too, right? It is. I mean, so what juggling the both. Place, Fanny, so what could we actually put in place to assure an increased level of confidence that we're doing the right thing? In other words, not circumventing you know, from the health and well-being of people for the sake of an emotional driven, yeah. uh, you know, uh, having of an event. So what we did was, you know, an example would be deep cleaning and sanitizing. That was huge, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So being able to utilize, um, you know, an, another association, which is the Global Bio-Risk Advisory Council, mm -hmm. to help us, you know, accredit, you know, a lot of our facilities. Um, and many of our facilities have gone through that process. So there's a, an example of one pushing out education that the industry is needing in a timely manner, you know, from risk management on the security front to what are the legal considerations to from a from an HR perspective, what are the regulatory components that the industry needs to be aware of as we kick off and start up our events and those that have, um, you know, started up their events. What have the challenges been? And how do we mitigate that so that we can blanket that throughout the entire industry so that we don't we don't go down that rabbit hole? If that makes sense. It does. It does. It really is. You're pulling from your huge network, right? Because the, ven the venues cover all of U.S., right? And it's actually it's international. So is it worldwide as well? Yeah, it's correct. Any lessons from from other countries that we've kind of adopted or learned from? You know, that's really interesting that you say that because in on a lot of our calls, we'll have folks from Australia that run venues in Australia, Melbourne. We have individuals from Mexico. I know we got Ruben, 
you know, listening in. These are, you know, through Amaref and, and all of our Mexican partners. Yeah. These folks are doing things as well to manage and mitigate any of the health risks. So we're constantly learning things from them as well. We learn from the Canadians. The Canadians provide us a lot of good feedback. At the same time, they sit on our calls and they're able to identify what's challenging us here, you know, within the United States and our homeland so that they can take that back to their facilities. It's been a very collective approach on how to, yeah. how to identify. Like a global collaboration and learning. Yes. Hmm. Wow. And then for you, Sarah, with the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, what are some of the, the things that you've seen impacted? I mean, you mentioned a few already, but, um, you know, what's been put in place to kind of still create that kind of great guest experience for them, you know, virtually and maybe like a, a modified kind of on-site experience? What has that been like? Yeah, so um, with the NFL, we've had to follow um, very strict and ever-changing um, stadium preparedness guidelines um, because ultimately, at the end of the day, what is at the heart and soul of any guest experience is making sure someone feels safe when they come to a venue, right? They want to be able to enjoy the experience. So we really focused in on, um, as Mark mentioned, obviously the the sanitation, and we we had an entire um, sanitation crew that came in. They were um, certified disinfection specialists um, that we had throughout the stadium, um, putting in the policies and procedures in place. Um, and and but kind of to your point of of making people. Um, Feel, feel welcome. So one of the, the kind of creative things that our team did um, is they created a smize video. If you are not familiar with smizing, it's smiling with your eyes because, you know, <laughs> During, in, in this pandemic world. Oh, yeah, because our mask. You're yeah. wearing a mask, right? Yes. So how do you communicate and make people feel welcome with just your mm -hmm. eyes, right? And your hands. Mm -hmm. and, and so yeah. we actually even changed our entire service philosophy. It was Be Great, which was an acronym. Um, this year, we actually uh, changed it, and it was the Duval Wave. So making people feel, feel welcome, that you're yeah. alert for safety, that you're making feel valued, and that we're having an attention to excellence. So even just changing the, the nomenclature of our service philosophy to wave mm -hmm. really yeah. changed everyone's mindset. Because if I'm standing here smiling at you, but I have a mask on, you have no yeah. idea what's happening, right? right. So it, it's trying to take it to that next level. Um, and then, of course, how do you make people feel welcome and um, take care of their needs six feet away, right? Mm -hmm. So th that was an, another challenge that we had, um, you know, making sure that um, all of our, because our um, stadium obviously was, um, the seating was socially distanced. Um, so we had to kind of come up with some extra creative ways, such as we had um, handheld signs reminding our our um, ticket holders, you know, when when they were in the seating bowl, just because you're outside in the beautiful Florida sunshine um, does yeah. not mean you can take your mask off. We don't, you know, only allowing them to take it off while they're literally taking a sip of a drink or, or, or having a bite to eat. Um, and, and being able to remind that, that to them in a friendly way, right? Because we want to make sure that they're enjoying the experience. But ultimately, we want to make sure everyone's safe, right? We want to make sure that people could keep coming back to the games in Jacksonville and keep it enjoying, um, you know, uh, cheering on our team. Absolutely. I'm curious to know those folks in the comments below. Let us know if you've been to a stadium or a venue or a modified concert in the last few months. I'd be curious to hear what your experiences has been as we kind of slowly get back into venues. So drop a comment in the comments below and share with us some of your experiences at venues lately. I'd be curious to see how that's going. Um, even for me, like I, we went to actually a high school football game at the uh, AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Um, our high school made it all the way to uh, to the, the Texas finals, I guess, the state finals. And, uh, <laughs> it, you know, I, I didn't even care where I sat. I was literally like four rows from the top. But, you know, that that thrill of still being socially distanced crowd, you know, like it's not even really a crowd because they kind of like, um, you know, close off numerous seats, but it, it's still a thrill. Like we, we like still being, being there it. with other people, right. Yes. And, and, and having that energy, I think that has been one of the biggest challenge for a lot of people in, in our industry um, yeah, is yeah. we're people, people, right? Like we, we like that interaction, you know, we, 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 we thrive off of that energy. So when, when you're behind a screen, I mean, we, we can still, we can still vibe, obviously Fanny and I are, yeah. and Mark are vibing, but yeah. it's, it's just, it's, 
different, right? So it's nice to get back into a real life scenario. Um, and, you know, we, we made a bunch of changes, you know, with the, co- we did made, went completely cashless, um, yeah. contactless with a, a lot of our, um, our things at the stadium. So, but it, it's all about getting people back so that we can enjoy the, the experiences altogether. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I didn't care about all the rules. I was just happy to be at the venue. Yeah. <laughs> Get me out of my house. This is yeah. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. Um, but I did. I want to highlight real quick, by the way, Jacksonville Jaguars. For those of you, um, I, I apologize. I don't know football that well, but I did scope out your LinkedIn page, the Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars LinkedIn page. And there is all kinds of great content on there. So for those of you that are tuning in from LinkedIn right now, make sure you go to the Jacksonville Jaguars LinkedIn page and follow that because they have great content. And as I was looking through that, I found an amazing video that really, I think, exemplifies our need for connection, no matter what, no matter pandemic, whatever challenges. Um, it was a story about an autistic boy that um, asked his mom a very innocent question. And he was a big Jaguars fan. And then the Jaguars response to that. So I want to play this for you all. And, um, and I think just to, to cement how much we'll always crave connection. So let's check it out. All I did was tweet a couple of sentences and a picture of David. I don't have any idea what happened after that, except for uh, it went viral. Carrie's beside me out there complaining about her phone vibrating. She says that there's something wrong. It's just I keep getting all these likes. There was an article on BuzzFeed about her tweet about David, and it turned out that she lives in Neptune Beach, and I live in Jacksonville Beach, and I realized, oh my goodness, not only is this person supportive of our team, but they're my neighbor. We found out that his first real question was, would anybody like him? You know, that pull on your heartstrings. Honestly, it hurt just hearing how a child was thinking um, at that that stage of his life. I have a lot of history with working with people with autism. I think they're some of the coolest people. Sometimes misunderstood. I was definitely willing to help. The reaction from the team and and other guys in the organization was pretty neat. What's up, David? I'm DJ Chart, and the Jaguars like you. Matt Orzak with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I just want to let you know. Uh, we like you. Hey, David. It's Logan Cook, punter from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, I like you. Hey, David. It's Charles Jones from the Jaguars. And I just want to let you know we like you. I want you to know that we like you. And guess what? We love you. The Jaguars did the, the little video for him. We called him out, and we all watched it together. That, that really, I think, impressed him. I mean, between the TV and my phone. and He also has an iPad, so he had it on the iPad. He probably watched it a lot of times, sat not on the iPad, I'd say about 100 times. I mean, the video goes on, but I, I just love that story. Sarah, do, do you have something to add from the behind the scenes of that? Yeah, it, um, it, it was really an incredible experience. The, the relationship really started actually with one of my team members and David's mom, and it really was able to grow a lot. And I actually had the, the pleasure of um, finally meeting David and his mom mm-hmm. at a game this season. And it's, I, I can't really give words to it. You know, just the, the joy that this was able to bring this family and the, the impact we were able to make. It's, it's incredible. Absolutely. In the comments, it's just, you know, Braden saying it's so important right now more than ever. Absolutely. Um, we have Angelique, who is from Hyatt Trinidad um, and uh, working in um, some of my job descriptions, working with food and beverage team, personalized upcoming guests and in-house guests, and also working with the team and giving all guests a wow effect. I mean, it's it's everywhere. Everyone has a great guest experience um, example and memories. And uh, Braden was saying, in addition to Daly's Place being booked every Wednesday night, they get national television exposure. Yep, AEW, all elite wrestling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and so, yeah, like there's, there's so many amazing examples. I'd love to hear like Mark, what, what's been a, a memorable guest experience for you at a venue? Oh, I, you know what? I, I've, I'm kind of like Sarah. I've seen, I have seen so many Fanny, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but I will tell you this, what, what I really, what really has made my day whenever I go to an event is um, IAVM, as you, as you know, we push out our live training to the entire industry, right? Um, you know, it includes, you know, a guest service component to it as well. Uh, you know, a, um, a safety and security component also. And so when we push it out and we train, we train these employees, what's amazing is when I go to an event, and I watch it. So it's so satisfying to watch these employees provide the best in guest service and customer experience. And I know that I, I mentioned it to, you know, like Dave Brown here at AT&T, um, you know, uh, in Dallas. Yeah. I said, look, every time I every time I walk into your facility, just like many others, I see I see everybody greeting me, making eye contact. Yes. you know, uh, trying to provide that memorable experience for me at the end of the day. Because again, we have to know that the reality is that under this current uh, health crisis, you know, we're going to have to create, you know, those experiences are going to have to be created more so than ever. And yeah. it's going to be incumbent of those frontline teams to do that. In this case, our guest service team. So I personally, you know, have been exposed to so many, but the rewarding thing for me is watching when other, you know, the teams that we train are actually out there doing a great job. And even under the most, um, you know, sometimes the most challenging and adverse conditions. Absolutely. Sarah, what's been one of your memorable guest experiences? Um, I, I'd have to say um, it actually is through one of um, my favorite of our um, programs that we have at the stadium, and it's called our Brag Button Program. So um, we have a program where if you are celebrating your birthday or any other special occasion or if it's your first game, um, you're able to visit any of our guest services booth and get a complimentary button that says, like, it's my birthday or I'm celebrating. And so I think one of my most memorable guest experiences was actually I was walking through the seating bowl. Obviously, this is all pre-COVID, and there was a little boy that had a uh, my my birthday pin on right and he walked up and the usher was like is it your birthday today he's like why yes it is and literally like the entire seating section then proceeded to sing happy birthday to this little boy and oh, it, was just, wow. it was it was just amazing you know and it's it's those little things that that we did like with a button that now it was a memory that this child and their family will have for, for the rest of their lives um so it's it, it was little things like that and sometimes it's just like this minute detail mm -hmm. that can like just create this extraordinary experience. Um, and, and so as we kind of plan, as you guys plan for 2021, what are some of the, you know, things that you're, you're going to put in place? And why do you think it's so important that we continue to maintain guest experiences in 2021? Maybe we start with you, Mark. Yeah, so from the perspective of IBM, the association, you know, um, obviously the key is that we're going to continue to become advocates for the entire industry, continue to provide all of the education and training, uh, you know, obviously through our annual, our annual conference. Um, that is where we have all the sectors, all the tracks. So we really hit, there's, there's components in there that deal with guest services. Um, we're going to continue to tap into all the resources that we have to provide the best, you know, in customer service guest experience, right? I kind of like the Guest X conference here, you know, yes. the committee under Sarah's direction has done a really great job in bringing in compelling, impactful information that is beneficial to the startup of, of any event. So I think providing the education, training, webinars, all the podcasts that we push out, yeah. um, also all the live training that we do, continue to train, you know, teams and staff from all the different facilities and organizations. That's how we're going to manage it on our end. As I mentioned before, IAVM is that beacon uh, you know, for the entire uh, the entire venue industry. Absolutely, and sometimes it's during those those low seasons that we we learn, and then we kind of like spread more awareness, right? Yeah, I love that. And then what about you, Sarah? You know, with gosh, I was just thinking back, like with eleven seasons with the NFL, you must have really seen a whole spectrum of 
of guest experiences. Um, before I ask you about 2021, I'm, I'm curious, like, what have you seen like that's changed over those those 12 seasons in terms of guest experiences? Um, God, uh, so much has changed, right? You know, um, everything, you know, there's been so much on a, the a security side that's changed, um, so much on the, the guest expectation, um, as well as, you know, the, uh, the different technologies that we use, you know, now we, we are, we're going to so much more digital with mobile ticketing and, you know, um, online ordering of food and beverages and contactless payment. So there's been so much of the technology changes over the past few years. And I think that even more so now um, with obviously COVID, that's going to just continue to evolve. And so we as, um, you know, leaders in the industry and, and guest experience, we need to continue to adapt to make sure that even though, you know, we're in a digital age, we still need to make sure that we're maintaining those connections, right? Yes. Building those relationships because that's really what it's all about. And so what we've been fortunate to do is even despite the pandemic, making sure that that we're staying in contact, we we call them touch points. So we don't not only make sure that we have touch points with our staff members, but also with our our season ticket members and our and our fans. So um, making sure that, that that we're continuing to build those relationships, even though we're far apart, um, so that when everyone is able to you know get back together in a full capacity in 2021, um, they're able to enjoy it and and they don't feel like you know that they've they've missed a beat, right? Because um, everyone's just so excited to get back to normal, right? Yes. Everyone, you know, we, we want to get back into the building. We want to get back to full capacity. You know, we want to be able to high five when our team. <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> Not just fist bumps. <laughs> or that the air five. Like, yeah. 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 Like, you know, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges that, that uh, some of our team members mentioned is they really want to hug people. Right. They, they, they are craving that human interaction. So I think the guest experience, you know, with, with people being so far apart for so long, it's going to be more important now than ever when they're finally able to get out that they're really able to forget about all that other stuff. Right. That they're able to enjoy the experience and and continue to make memories with, with their family and their friends. Absolutely. Yeah, I could add to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Think about all the stressors that people have had to endure. All right. When yes. you start layering all those stressors, it becomes almost, uh, almost you can't manage it. It becomes a challenge. So how do you plan around each one of those stressors to remove it, right? To remove yeah. it and move on. These teams, these guest service teams are going to have, they're, they are tasked with so many responsibilities uh, moving forward. And, and I saw Je Jennifer Henderson, you know, made a really great point, you know, they're, the teams are going to have to create those wow moments, right? Yes. And how do they create those wow moments is Absolutely. going to be the key so that you can start establishing confidence where we've been challenged, confidence, and also balance the safety and, and security and guest experiences, you know, as Sarah mentioned. Because, again, all of these guests, and they've been challenged since March. Yeah. And empathy, you know, empathy is going to be required on how you handle so, sometimes these delicate situations Yes. that our guest service teams are going to encounter um, in order to foster a successful outcome at, at the end of the day. And garnering that compliance is key, you know, to provide that enjoyable, memorable experience. And that is what we're trying to drive with this Guest X conference. Absolutely. And I think that's that's one of the reasons I think it's such a great idea that you guys incorporated the topic of mental health in the Guest X conference. Um, I do want to kind of like, actually really pull it up real quick because you know again like you have a whole topic dedicated to that on the um agenda was it day three day, day, two. day two yes day two. yes uh -huh. you know uh building a resilient mind applying mental strategies that elite performers utilize to manage highly adverse situations we're in the midst of a highly adverse situation right um and uh, it's it's definitely a necessary thing. So I, I think that's a wonderful thing that you're adding to the program. Thank you, Fanny. And at the end of the day, what we're going through right now is going to really identify those that are very resilient. Hmm. Because I always say that inoculation to certain conditions is going to give you the tools to, to mitigate and manage those situations in the future. Yeah. Right. So based on everything that we've had to endure since March, I can honestly say that once we get through this, the entire industry will be resilient and, and, and better equipped to handle all of the situations that we've encountered. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's when you're really challenged like this and in, in, in ways in so many different ways and in, in ways that we've never been challenged before that, you know, you, you rise to the occasion, right? You know, you yes. are, I know our team, um, you know, we, we've been, our, our staff has been reduced. There's been budget cuts. There's been so many different challenges that so many people have, have faced and, and to come out on the other end and, and, and have that resilience. Um, but I think making sure to, to take care of yourself, is really, really important. And that's what we really wanted to, to bring about with the conference. Because at the end of the day, if you don't take care of you, yeah. how can you help anyone else and make their experience better? Um, okay. And it will just uh, another thing that, that we've really been focusing on is with the pandemic and everything just ever changing, you know, everything has been our, our line um, with everything that we told our staff this year was subject to change. So this is what we're going to do today at this exact moment, but it's all subject to change. So having that flexibility um, and remaining resilient is, is really <laughs> yeah. it is a, And Fanny, uh, to compliment what Sarah just said as well is listen, when, when IAVM gets out there and we push our educational offerings through our awesome committees who drive this content, right, under the direction of Sarah, we're also speaking to those that have been furloughed. We're also speaking to those that have been laid off because these folks are not going to be out of a job indefinitely. And they're going to come back into the workforce at some point in time. And when they do, we want to better equip them to have the tools to manage the, the situations and the conditions <coughs> Under this current health crisis, much better. So this is speaking to them as well, Fanny. Absolutely, absolutely. So as we kind of go back, I know there's quite a few IAVM members that are in the audience. Thank you for tuning in. I do want to kind of have you all share some advice and tips for them. And even just for folks that are tuning in that are putting on events, even at this much smaller scale networking events and, um, you know, socially distanced uh, events or webinars and things like that. Um, what are some safety advice that you would have for people at venues as we kind of roll back into that, Mark? Absolutely. So that's a great question. So the first thing is that we need to do what we've been doing collectively come together and make a reasonable effort to provide safe and healthy environments for those working and attending all events. That's so important. I always say, although there's no guarantee to a zero risk environment, we're going to continue to implement and uh, all the measures and means to mitigate all risks that are associated with this health crisis, but we can't do it alone. So we've got to do it together. We have to assure that we provide all of the resources and training to our frontline teams you know, uh, staff and also uh, leadership. Remember, leadership's under a whole different DNA, uh, you know, during this crisis than, than pre-COVID. Um, so that's going to be important. How do we keep our guests, uh, you know, how do we increase the confidence level in our guests um, and have them attend safe events during this pandemic? Now, the second or the third thing is promoting healthy behaviors, right? Mm. Um what do you mean by that? Healthy behaviors that reduce the spread of any communicable disease. Uh, and we're doing that now. The industry is working hard on that now. Utilizing the most important asset, the frontline teams to protect others by maintaining these healthy environments and managing not only the health risk, but the security risk and training them to identify those risks through a, what I call a, a assumptive risk analysis and identify those mitigating practices through our educational offerings and through all of our, obviously our, our town halls and our forums that we have with all of the different sectors. And of course, working with experienced partners who have the credentials in health and safety. Those are key components to, uh, you know, to uh, creating that safe uh, guest experience at events. And kind of just adding on to that, I think the next important piece of that is the communication of that. Like mm -hmm. you can do a really, really great job and you can put together all of these great plans, right? But if you're not telling your guests what you're doing, so one of the things that we did was a we created an entire no before you go video. And it was really like, hey, these this is what we have done. This is what we're doing at the stadium. This is what you can expect. And then this is what we need you to do before you come to our venue. And if you are going to come to our venue, like like show up hundred percent, right? If you're not feeling well, please don't come. Stay home, right? Yeah. Make sure Sure you're, you're wearing your mask make sure you're washing your hands frequently make sure, sure you're practicing social distancing it's all it was all of those things so the no before you go is a, a really kind of important piece as well 
I love that. Yeah. So to summarize, you know, number one, you mentioned, Mark, like just training of staff and, you know, ensuring that they know all the new protocols and policies. Number two, instilling confidence so that people feel secure and comfortable coming back. And then a lot of risk analysis, definitely. And then communicating all that. So thank that you. The communication piece that Sarah mentioned mm-hmm. is a part that I left out, but that is so critical and so important. I got your back, Mark. Don't worry. I know you do. (laughs) And then, Sarah, what would your advice be around guest experiences? You know, from small to big, like what are some things and tips that you would give to people around guest experience during this uh, pandemic in 2021? Yeah, um, my first piece of advice would be be intentional. Right. Uh, when it's when it comes to you, whether, you know, it's your staff training, if it's your interacting with, with your guests, with um, your, your stadium partners, make sure you're being intentional and really thinking, taking the time to think through these processes, think through the impacts that some of these decisions might have. Um, my second the second thing I a piece of advice is show that you care. Right. You know, make sure that your team members know that you care about them and their health and their safety. And they're going to make sure that they make sure they'll make sure that's really smart, Sarah. Um, They'll make sure that they uh, are welcoming your guests and taking really good care of your guests. Right. So make sure that they know that they're, they're taking care of and that you care for them. And then my third piece of advice would be treat everyone as an individual. Right. Every everyone's situation is a little bit different. Um, you, everyone's attendance policy obviously has changed probably a lot now with um, the the pandemic. So treating everyone as an individual, whether it's your team member, whether it's a colleague or a, a guest that you're interacting with, treat them as an individual. I love that. So be intentional, take care of everything, be very caring, and then the individual consideration. Thank you, Sarah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I... I guess another thing, you know, to build on the communication and individual consideration is I did want to share real quickly, you know, I I will be speaking at GuestX conference. So super excited about that. And uh, I thought I'd give everyone just a little teaser of what I'll be talking about. Um, I am going to be tying communications and marketing to psychology of all things and um, to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, How many people know about Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Drop a quick comment in the comments below. Let me know if you know the five levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But I think so much of that can be tied to venues and then tied to how all our experiences are tied to our needs and how we can tie that to guest experiences as well as marketing, branding, and communications. And Fanny, before you show this video, I just want to say that Sarah and I, and obviously the committee, truly, we we vet all of our presenters. Mm -hmm. And we just, we know that you are truly going to set the tone for this Mm -hmm. entire conference. And so you do such a great job. We're excited to have you. So I'm excited to see what you're going to show them. (laughs) This is just like 20 seconds. (laughs) Wait, I'm so excited. (laughs) Here we go, just a quick one. It's a tiny little teaser. <laughs> Not but, uh, anymore. Yes. So, I mean, the whole point of that is at the end of the day, it's it's stories. Stories matter. Storytelling matters. Storytelling, just like David Block's story, right? It, it immediately connects us, reminds us of why we love our sport teams, reminds us of this need for love and belonging. And um, so much of marketing and guest experiences, I think, are tied to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so I'm going to talk all around that from like the very basic needs of 
how is our food and beverage and shelter taken care of at venues and the experience we have with that, as well as to our safety needs, which you highlighted very eloquently, Mark, to our love and belonging needs, mm -hmm. how we feel this need, this constant craving for connection and community and friends and family, and then moving up words to our self-esteem needs, right? We can't appreciate anything if we don't have respect for ourselves, respect for others, respect for diversity, respect by others. Um, and then finally to self-actualization. And, um, and one of the key things with that is, I think at venues and sporting events, they remind us of like our true potential. Right? Some of the greatest athletes, the greatest artists, the greatest speakers, the greatest industry experts showcase their talents at venues. And I think that reminds us of our growth and our potential. And so all of that, I think, is tied into guest experience and venues. So I'll be talking all about that at the conference. So thank you. Um, I did want to kind of the hour always flies by, and uh, I wanted to kind of close off real quick with a, um, I guess, a tip, right? I think so much, we've, we've shared a lot of tactical tips, but I would love to hear from each of you just a life lesson, a tip for the heart, and um, something that maybe is a guiding light or a guiding quote or a guiding lesson that you've learned that you'd like to share with the audience. Sarah, why don't you? Kick I, it I was gonna say I have I have one that comes straight to mind. So Mark, I'll I'll give you a few minutes. Um, <laughs> but uh, the 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 quote that really um, means the most to me um, is "Bloom where you are planted." Right? You can't really control your your situation and and where you're put, but what you can control is growing and 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 taking in the the area around you and and being the best that you can be in the situation that you are currently in you know don't don't look at where someone else is and, and what what they've got going on like really focus on you so bloom where you are planted is is uh, my little tip i love it bloom where you're planted love it mark hey, i don't know that i can top that one <laughs> just speak from the heart mark <laughs> i i would say that um if I had to offer a tactical tip, it would be to always stay connected and know that we're in this thing together and know that we will be more resilient through what I am calling condition inoculation, right? We're in a condition now that's going to make us better at the end of the day. We cannot lose hope, right? So we have to continue to power through this together. Keep up with your heart health, all right, habits. I think that is important. And focus on your health to stay strong. That keeps your mind strong. And every day that I work out, not every day, but most of the time, uh, I do work out. It doesn't look like it, Fanny, but I always post something motivational. I've seen very, your Instagram photos. You definitely you work, out. work out every day. <laughs> I try. Okay, I'm, I'm going to embarrass exactly. Mark a little bit. You all need to go check him out on Instagram. <laughs> I love it. So, but, yes. yeah, the heart health is so important, right? If you can, if you can stay healthy there, the mind is healthy. So, good habits is heart healthy. Um, you know, keeps your mind healthy. You know, the reality of the event industry—it's unrelentingly unrelent disruptive. It has been since March, right? Um, change is happening. It's going to continue to happen at what we consider that unprecedented pace. We know it's going to happen. Venues of all types and organizations have to successfully adapt and operate under a whole set of rules and expectations that are constantly in flux based on this crisis. We're going to manage. We're going to get through it together. But the challenge of this disruption, as we know, has posed that economical and physical risk. Yeah. But this will see how resilient at the end of the day, and Sarah had mentioned it, we will be, and we will embrace those growth opportunities as an outcome. Absolutely. You guys have inspired all kinds of comments in the comments. Let me just highlight some of our wonderful fans and audience members. Jennifer Henderson, love that, Sarah. Bloom where you are planted. Yolanda loves your tip as well, Sarah. Thank you. Um, Mark Reynolds, respect given earns respect. Yes, yes, indeed. Aaron Murray, 
plant joy, tend grace, and grow love. Oh, Aaron, I love that. Plant joy, tend grace, and grow love. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Lisa, she must be one of your IABM members. She's like, She's join one us. one of our wonderful committee members, yes. <laughs> I love it, love it. Welcome, love Lisa. You. Join us definitely for Guess X. And uh, Christina, Christina knows the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yes, physiological safety, belonging and love, esteem and self-actualization. Rosa, I love this quote, caring of needs, posture for reaction on both sides of interactions. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, Braden, level three equals belonging, aka inclusion. Yes, so important right now and throughout our lifetimes, this inclusion. So thank you, Braden. Thanks for the great advice. And uh, thank you, everyone, for interacting. I have the best audience. I you have really to brag. Do. They're great. <laughs> They're absolutely great. They are amazing. I love this awesome. audience. Um, so as we wrap up, I, let's let me pull up the guest X uh, link again. Uh, and if you can post that to the comments again, you all please check out the International Association of Venue Managers uh, Guest X Conference all around guest experiences, iavm.org. Go to Guest X. Mark, any final words? I just want to thank everybody for taking time to actually join us, um, you know, today. And it's our goal at the end of the day to meet and e exceed the expectations of all of our membership. We look at ourselves and Brad Main says it best, our president CEO, as servant leaders to the entire industry. Yes. And so we want to emulate that, right? So um, we didn't want to, we're definitely not going to give up on the industry until the industry comes out on top. And we're going to ride that with them. But I, I would say just, uh, you know, I want everybody to stay positive, stay healthy, right? Stay engaged, stay connected. And like Sarah said, continue to communicate and take as much, as many resources that you can to better yourself. Listen, if you start to feel down and out, I got to tell everybody, pick up the phone and call me. I, I can always use a friend, right? Yes. And one, day I, one day I said that, Fanny, and somebody called me at three o'clock in the morning. I kid you not. Wow. But you want that almost, especially during this time, right? <laughs> he was already like running mile three at that point. He was fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's my um, Yes. You. And then everyone, so is, is LinkedIn the best place for people to find you, Mark? LinkedIn, Facebook. I usually post all of the, the positive motivational on, on Facebook when I work out and and show my frail body. But it's, so it's it's Facebook, LinkedIn. I, I am on, uh, I used to never be on social media. Luckily, I have an awesome team at IVM that kind of trains and teaches me, like our marketing team and Greg Wolf, our education manager. They, I'm basically good because of them. Love it. And then what about you, Sarah? Who who should be signing up for GuessX? Anyone who has any interactions with with um, with guests, right? So the the last GuessX conference actually happened right before the pandemic hit. It was at the end of February in sunny San Diego, and we our industry has changed so much since the last guest X conference. So anyone for who, if you have been furloughed, this conference is for you. If you are an entry level person who is looking to get in the industry, this conference is for you. If you're a senior level executive, this conference is for you. So it's a really great opportunity um, to, to get a few um, a, a new knowledge nuggets, if you will, um, interact with some really, really wonderful people. And we really hope um, that a lot of people are able to, to sign up. Um, as I mentioned, if, um, um, your group, obviously, a lot of budgets have been cut. So there is a, a multi-registration discount um, and buy a couple of registrations, get one free. So really, um, we're trying to make it um, accessible to as many people as possible. It's February um, 9th through 11th. Um, it is only in the um, starts at noon Eastern time. Um, we have smaller um, group segments, so make what you can. Um, and we were really, really excited for this year's lineup. You know, Fanny's going to kick us off and I'm, I know her crew will be really excited to see her here um but it's really really going to be a great conference and i really look forward to seeing everyone there fanny i think you muted yourself girl
Oh, sorry. My dog was barking. This is the chaos at my household. <laughs> yep. Work from home life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So definitely connect with Sarah. Um, and uh, Sarah, any other social media platforms that are good to connect with you? Um, really, uh, LinkedIn is probably the best for me. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. And then for any venue managers out there, IAVM.org, definitely check that out. Uh, quick plug. Uh, please hold on, Mark and Sarah. Let me just do a quick plug for one of my own associations. It is the Association of Business Technology Professionals. On Tuesday, February 23rd at 6, we will be going virtual with Andy Ivey, CIO of Carola, reversing the social dilemma, personal data protection strategies. This is for all my technology enthusiasts, um, and, uh, and you'll definitely want to check that out. So as I close the show, thank you, Mark. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for your time. You I've learned that. so much. It just it just makes me want to go to a venue now. <laughs> and, Come uh, on to Jacksonville. We'd love to have you. Oh, yes. I'll be in Florida in March. <laughs> Perfect. So, Let me yes. know. Give me a call. Love it. Love it. And um, I want to remind everyone out there, my favorite hashtag, and definitely follow it, shine your light share your message, share your voice, share your gifts with the world. And if you can do it through video. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the show. Thank you to my amazing guests. Go and connect with them.